Hello and welcome to our weekly program To The Point. Today we have with us a leader from Punjab who floated his own party five years ago, but just recently merged that party with the Congress just a year ahead of the assembly elections in the state. We have with us Manpreet Badal, cousin of Sukhbir Singh Badal, the Deputy Chief Minister as well as the nephew of the Chief Minister and a former member of Shiromani Akali Dal as well. Sir, welcome to the show. Uh, quite a uh, long introduction. I, I uh, you know, uh, willingly uh, withheld myself half of it. You, you've been uh, the former finance minister of the state. You've been the youngest finance minister of the state. Uh, and when you became MLA way back in 90s, you were the youngest MLA as well. Uh, quite a number of achievements. You floated a party uh, just five years ago. Uh, and uh, you, you rose on the uh, political scene of uh, the state of Punjab with the bang. But uh, then a uh, number of uh, electoral losses uh, and you merged your party. What happened? Why the merger? Well, uh, you know, which, uh, before I answer your question, there's a background. A, I resent being tagged as Sukhbir's cousin or Mr. Badal's nephew. <laughs> but somehow this tag doesn't leave me, howsoever hard I try. There's a background to what I have been doing in politics. I'm 53 years old. I was born in 62. And when I was born, in growing up in rural Punjab, there was a spring in our walk. You know, that, there was a whistle in, in our voice because when we were growing up, uh, Punjab was building the Bhakra Dam. We were building Chandigarh. Uh, the Punjab Agriculture University was coming up. Green Revolution was t taking roots. Small, small towns and mandis of Punjab were being industrialized. And growing up in Punjab, I felt that by the time I'm old enough, that curse of poverty which befalls India, that would have gone. And 45 years later, when I became finance minister, the same set of problems which my grandfather's generation faced, which my father's generation faced. So there is, a, there is an acute sense of embarrassment. You know, when I was growing up, you'll have to believe me, uh, Punjab was a beacon of light for this nation. Mm -hmm. um, Every sports medal which used to come India's way was from Punjab. Every gallantry medal, whether Mahavir Chakkar or Paramvir Chakkar, was from Punjab. Mm -hmm. So I have seen Punjab at a very high pedestal. And, you know, 45 years later, uh, Punjab is in the doldrums, whether it's uh, young people taking to drugs, whether the state finances, where government is, it seems impossible even to pay your employees its salaries. So there is an acute sense of embarrassment of where Punjab has landed itself and a sense of duty almost that Punjab must be progressed. I must uh, interject out here, uh, Mr. Badal. Uh, I exactly remember five years ago, uh, or rather four and a half years ago, when assembly elections were taking uh, place in Punjab and uh, your party was just less than a year old. It was almost the same things which you said to me in, in an interview which I did then. But what I want to know right now is that what happened in those four and a half years that you uh, managed, you decided to forsake your independent identity which you created as People's Party of Punjab and merged with Congress? Well, we, we tried this experiment of giving Punjab a third front. Mm -hmm. And we fought the Vidhan Sabha elections, the Lok Sabha elections, the Zilla Parishad elections, the Panchayat elections, every election in Punjab. And we could not muster more than five, five and a half percent of the vote. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, Einstein, the famous quote of Einstein, that insanity is when you try the same thing and again and again, and you expect a different result every time. So we realized that Punjab, at the moment or you know is not ready for a radical agenda which people's party of punjab was promising and in the last uh, six months i uh, happened to meet mr rahul gandhi uh, on three occasions and discussing the problems of punjab and the solutions and eventually actually trying to convince him that the ppp agenda which is an 11 point agenda uh, and uh, he he was convinced and he has assured me that this 11-point agenda will actually also figure in Congress agenda. So Congress has adopted this agenda and we felt that a Congress is a bigger platform, a better platform. The Congress has the maturity, the leadership has the maturity, it has um, the leadership uh, and also, you know, some political party which can actually take some risks uh, in the future so that Punjab comes up on uh, most economic and social parameters. So that is why we decided to actually, uh, you know, forego our independent uh, identity and actually merge with the Congress. 
But don't you find it a little bit ironical that as far as leadership is concerned, well, yes, uh, at the center, the leadership uh, might have undergone a bit of a change, uh, although it's from the same family as far as Congress is concerned. But the state level, uh, the, the state level leaders of the Congress uh, are the same against whom uh, you fought when you were part of uh, the Shunumani Akali Dal, against whom uh, when you were part of the SAD, you formed a government, you became the finance minister. You know, uh, unfortunately, uh, when you talk about uh, uh, politics, and obviously politics is about an, an agenda, pol politics is about policies, not about individuals. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, in Punjab or even to some extent India, it's the individuals who actually have become bigger than policies. So insofar as uh, the agenda of the Congress is concerned, mm -hmm. and the fact that I've been assured that uh, whatever uh, concerns we had and whatever priorities we had uh, uh, and they will be met so uh, we foresee uh, no reason and I think as far as when you talk about the leadership and even if you t talk about individuals I think Captain Amrinder Singh is one of the most charismatic leaders to have emerged out of Punjab in the last you know decade or so he's a very honorable man mm, a lot lot of people I mean he's obviously above uh, personal corruption and all, all those, that kind of allegation. And I think most of uh, your viewers may, may not know that Captain Amrinder Singh actually was um, serving in the Indian Army as a captain. Obviously, he was not serving there for, for, for a living. And a few months before uh, this 1965 war, he had actually resigned his commission. Mm -hmm. And when the war broke out, he actually fought with the defense secretary and with the government of India, that since India has gone into battle and uh, th I'm needed, I want my commission back. I mean, for a son of a Maharaja, anybody else less honorable would have said, thank God I've resigned my commission. I don't, don't need to get into a war. So I think these are, you know, character characteristics of leaders, you know, because a leader is someone who's not afraid. He speaks his mind. So I think he's a good bet to lead Punjab. Okay, great. There is uh, one more uh, thing as far as, uh, uh, you know, your uh, merger into Congress party is concerned, another aspect to it. Uh, that is, it was not only Congress uh, you were, uh, you know, uh, trying to talk to or uh, were not only Congress which was trying to talk to. Uh, you yourself uh, admitted uh, on the day when you joined the party that uh, you were approached by the Aam Aadmi Party as well. You had a choice. And you uh, have already explained that why Congress, uh, you merged with Congress, but then why leave out Aam Aadmi Party? Because in the last five years, the things which you have been talking about uh, are almost uh, similar to the uh, you know uh, speeches and to the points which have been put forth by the leaders of the Aam Aadmi Party. As in, well. in fact, you know we have been in touch with AAP uh, because we were predecessors of the AAP. We we actually came into existence uh, two two and a half years before even the Anna movement, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, I, some of the state leaders, in fact, Mr. Yogendra Yadav, when he was uh, uh, still part of the AAP, I actually met him, I met Sanjay Singh mm -hmm. and uh, some other uh, various AAP leaders. And I actually tried to speak to them about the Punjab, Punjabi agenda. Mm -hmm. And the stock reply which I used to get was that we are a new party, we are an evolving party, so we really don't have positions insofar as uh, you know the social political and economic problems of Punjab are concerned mm -hmm. so basically in our view they just didn't have a a, a blueprint for Punjab mm -hmm. and B the kind of leadership which is required to pull Punjab out of this mess mm -hmm. and on the other hand as I said uh, not only did a uh, Congress party ex uh, accept the total agenda of Punjab mm -hmm. uh, but um, we actually were in alliance with the Congress party for the Zilla Parishad elections and Lok Sabha and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we were quite familiar with their ground level leadership and the results you know, of this alliance mm -hmm. um, were fantastic. So it, it, it was almost like uh, uh, that the Congress was a natural choice. The Congress was a natural choice. It was a natural choice for us. Okay, uh, let me also dwell upon uh, the natural choice which you have made uh, and uh, one of the about one of the leaders you spoke about. Uh, uh, there, everybody knows, and it's 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 a pretty well uh, known in the political circles that uh, many of the Congress's state units uh, 
are uh, you know stuck with the, their decisions because of factionalism and the state unit of punjab is uh, no uh, you know not immu immune to that as well just a short while back uh, the congress uh, leadership at the center had to take uh, you know a large amount of time to decide upon who should lead the party in the next elections and then finally decided upon captain amarinder singh there are factions as well so uh, were you uh, since you are in politics you were aware of it aware of it earlier as well how do you think you'll be able to manage this because you would be seeing as uh, another player inside the congress's uh, uh, state unit in punjab well uh, for a start that uh, we have joined uh, the congress party without any preconditions and we have specifically told the vice president that we are not willing to accept uh, any positions uh, or in the whether it's in the ppcc or even at the central level so no worker of the or no leader of the pp PPP will actually be adjusted in the so, so we will not be actually stepping on anybody's toes. So we will not be actually, you know, seen to be uh, taking up positions which are being seen as a separate, you know, pressure group within the Congress. So I don't think so. The idea, as far as as the idea as far as us is concerned, that somehow Punjab must be progressed, willingly if possible but kicking and screaming if required. And for this, this agenda must go through. This agenda is sacred, it's sacrosanct. And we will actually try and steer very clear of this factionalism. Uh, and hopefully, uh, with Mr. Captain, with Captain Amarinder Singh as the leader, uh, this factionalism should also be diluted, diluted to a great extent. Okay, great. Uh, we'll take a short break here, and when we come back, uh, we will uh, ask questions uh, to Manpreet Badal on that 11-point agenda with which He's entered the Congress party and merged his PPP into this national outfit. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Manpreet Badal, uh, the newly inducted leader of uh, the Congress party in Punjab is still with us. Uh, sir, uh, before we went into the break, uh, you spoke about how uh, the 11-point agenda which your party had for the last five years for uh, the development of Punjab uh, uh, was something which was, uh, you know, accepted uh, toto in toto by the Congress's leadership. Uh, it has been 10 years since the Shiromani Akali Dal has been in power in the state of Punjab. And uh, you had been part of that government for uh, almost two years as the finance minister as well. What, according to you, has gone wrong, both politically, socially, and most important, economically as well? Well, when I was a little child studying in a school, in a science class, we were taught that mm, if you boil water at 100 degrees, it's going to turn into steam. And that's science. You know, there, there, is, there is no ifs and buts. 100 degrees, water is going to become steam. Similarly, in what is called statecraft, statecraft is actually a science you know and there are no ifs and buts and if you and it it's actually decided that if you have policies a b and c there will be progress mm -hmm. x y and z they'll actually be disaster mm -hmm. so i think the first thing which we need to recognize mm -hmm. is that punjab must come out of the feudal mindset mm -hmm. and the first uh, point in the agenda which we gave to the congress is actually to, f to actually s stop or dis dispense with what is known as the VIP culture or the VVVIP culture, the Lal Bhatti culture, the gunman culture. Mm -hmm. That has to go because in any society, rule of law, that is the bedrock of any civilization or any society to progress. So Punjab, the first thing which we need to do is not only to do away with the VIP culture and the rule of law, to, uh, and also, you know, that whole feudal mindset. And also to professionalize the Punjab police. Mm -hmm. The Punjab police has actually become one of the greatest hindrances to Punjab's progress. The, you know, the chain of command in the police has broken down. The Thanedar is not scared of the SP. The SP is not scared of the Director General of Police because they, they are politically aligned. So we need to professionalize our police force. The rule of law must... Because there is a thumb rule in progress that unless you have uh, justice you're not going to get peace and unless there is peace there is going to be no progress so that is the bedrock of what we're trying to say that uh, you know the whole political the politicization of the police the politicization of the bureaucracy that must end corruption must end 
Okay, one one point uh, which uh, uh, the entire opposition leaders from the entire opposition has been uh, talking about, be it uh, uh, you when you are part of the PPP and now also when you become part of the Congress, even the Congress leaders, leaders from Amadmi Party, and uh, this was something which was said uh, uh, during uh, your inclusion uh, in the Congress Party as well. Promise was made uh, from the dais both by you and Captain Amrinder Singh that once uh, the Congress comes back to power in Punjab, the the drug menace will be dealt with immediately with uh, within a very short span of time so how does your party plan to do that well uh, uh, it's very simple uh, because obviously drugs are not being smuggled from across any international borders mm -hmm. because if that were the case then Rajasthan has a boundary which is three times larger than Punjab and Gujarat which is twice as large as Punjab and similarly with Kashmir so the drug problem is specific to Punjab because these drugs are being manufactured and circulated within Punjab and they have the backing of some elements, some rogue elements in the police and of course some rogue uh, elements within the political establishment. So once there is a will, uh, I refuse to believe, I refuse to believe uh, that uh, a state police or the sovereign writ of the state mm -hmm. which can wipe out terrorism mm -hmm. within months once you know the mind was made up mm -hmm. uh, cannot wipe out these uh, petty drug dealers you know uh, i'm not even talking about months or years mm -hmm. within within hours these people but you know you must realize uh, in the present establishment the will is not there mm -hmm. because drugs obviously generate a huge amount of money and i would not try and hazard a guess but my own feeling is that uh, between 10 to 15,000 crores of rupees uh, is actually made by these drug smugglers and it's right across the chain. Mm -hmm. So it's huge amount of money. It's uh, almost 2 billion US dollars. It's, it's not easy for these rogue elements to give up these privileges. But somehow, you know, um, no one has the right to give poison to our gen you know, coming generations and all and this has to be done. So whatever it takes, uh, and it will take, believe me, literally hours, not even days, uh, once there's a new government in place. You've time and again said that. I want to ask, I ask it again. Uh, is this entire drug business uh, and all these drug cartels being patronized by the present state government? Yes. I'm, I'm, it's, it's very embarrassing for me to say that, but that is true. It's embarrassing because, uh, you know, leaders are like teachers. You know, they're supposed, a le leader is like a ma bap. Can you imagine parents giving poison to their own children? This is what has been happening. I, I, I'm afraid I will have to refer to you uh, uh, with the same uh, introduction again for asking this question. I use also saying that since this government is being headed by uh, uh, your uh, uncle as well as uh, your cousin brother is the deputy chief minister, they are aware of it and they are implicitly or explicitly involved in this? Well, um, I'm saying it on oath on a national TV, that there are politicians who are involved in this trade. And uh, you don't have to believe me, you can take the same set of cameras to someone who's selling vegetables at a bus stand or you know somebody who's got a tea stall. So it's not that Manpreet is saying out of, out of some political malice, you can actually take it to the bazaars of Punjab. They will actually tell you the names, of, you know, names which I don't want to tell you right away. Okay, but we'll, we'll wait. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, once the elections are around the corner, uh, you will not be, and your colleagues in the party will not be withholding names. Uh, uh, let's, let's move across to the next important point uh, as far as uh, the state is concerned. That's the economy. All of us know that for uh, past few years now, the uh, economic state of uh, the state of Punjab has been going down uh, steadily and the state has been uh, in uh, debt for quite a while. We've seen uh, uh, news reports, we've seen decisions being taken by uh, the state cabinet uh, to you know, uh, mortgage uh, one or the other uh, state property to pay salaries. What is it that your 11 point agenda and the Congress's agenda which of, uh, of which you remember now is to turn around the state's economy? Well, first of all, because uh, Punjab is an agricultural powerhouse, uh, in the last, uh, 15 years, uh, the, 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 you know, the pride of Punjab used to be the Punjab Agriculture University, the PAU. Uh, the funding has actually just stopped. And because funding has stopped, faculties have become depleted. And in the last 10 years, PAU has not been able to come up with a single new seed variety of cotton. In the last four years, they have not been able to come up with a single new seed variety of wheat. 
So unless you start funding, because without knowledge, you will not be even able to do agriculture. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to start funding PAU to get faculties at the requisite you know, strength so that Punjab's agricultural output and agriculture, the, the, not only the output, but also the quality of produce uh, can come up. Punjab obviously needs to shift from cereal production uh, because you know we have in the last 25 years depleted our soil and the soil health. We poisoned our soil, and the green revolution actually needs to move eastwards towards uh, you know Bihar and Bengal and Odisha and Uttar Pradesh because this is the real uh, you know uh, the agricultural belt of Punjab. Punjab actually needs to shift to vegetables, fruits, dairy and maybe maize production. So this is what the next government should be looking at, um, to converting Punjab's uh, you know, agriculture from, from just cereal production. Mm -hmm. But that was necessary because that was a time when India was short of food. We had to wait yeah. for, um, uh, on the seashore for American shipments. And food security was as important as national security. But Punjab has done its national duty. So once we get into value adding uh, in our um, agriculture, I think Punjab's economy can be turned around and of course with some key investments in our industrial sector, uh, I, I see a very bright future for Punjab. Okay, uh, you've been uh, the finance minister of the state as well, so obviously uh, uh, your views on the economic policies uh, should hold a lot of value for uh, your colleagues in the Congress. Uh, uh, and, and just recently uh, you said uh, uh, in a statement that uh, you welcome uh, the GST bill which is uh, uh, now being proposed uh, by the Modi government at the centre and your current party uh, is uh, you know staunchly opposed to that move, uh, asking for three amendments. Uh, so, uh, would you have uh, some suggestions uh, to your colleagues in the party, no, uh, or, or, or would you uh, would you rather want them to uh, you know get the GST cleared in this budget session itself? No, no, no. Uh, I think I, th I think I was misquoted in a newspaper. But what I was trying to tell them was that when I was a f the finance minister in Punjab, we did an internal exercise within the finance department mm -hmm. to actually evaluate how GST is going to affect Punjab. And because Punjab is a net consuming state, so Punjab would stand to benefit. And uh, some, of the, uh, some of the conditions which the Congress party has been raising for GST, and that is to keep a lower rate and all, uh, certainly that would be good for the consumer and for you know, the people at large. But insofar as Punjab is concerned, you see, we have a very large uh, uh, non-resident uh, population which lives in the first world. And somehow, uh, you know, they remit money, and a lot of them is remitted, you know, not by official channels, but by hawala and all. So Punjab may not look, you know, the state finances may not look rosy, but then motorcycles are being sold, washing machines are being sold, television, and Punjab just generally, you know, represents a prosperous outlook. So consumption patterns are very high. Um, we have a very large ex-servicemen population, so they are getting pensions and all. So generally, because con consumption is high, and GST is actually on, on, on the level of consumption, mm -hmm. so Punjab will actually tend to benefit from GST rather than lose from it. But there are some manufacturing states which may lose out. So I'm, I'm not actually uh, either, mm, uh, you know, I'm not competent to actually comment on the entire the gambit of G GST, but I can only, you know, from a very no narrow perspective of a, Punjab, I can say that it would be very. It tender. would be beneficial for G Punjab G if the GST bill is passed as soon as possible. As soon as possible, and Punjab would actually uh, stand to benefit hugely. Okay, let's go back to politics. One last question before we, uh, you know, uh, come to an end of this interview. Uh, other smaller parties like yours uh, in Punjab uh, and uh, led by uh, senior leaders, former senior leaders, uh, or uh, you know somebody from their families. For example, uh, the Shiromani Akali, the Longowal group, uh, uh, Surjit Singh Banala, the former chief minister's party. Do you believe uh, that parties like these uh, coming to Congress, uh, either uh, taking a decision of merger just like you took, or maybe an alliance, uh, would bolster Congress's chances uh, in the coming elections? I certainly feel it would, you know, if uh, they can form a larger, uh, because uh, opposition votes, if they can be, you know, they, ha they can have a cumulative effect. Um, uh, but uh, in the last election, Shiromni Akali, the Longowal and PPP and both the left parties, uh, we were in uh, one grand alliance. Um, the left uh, may have lost uh, its significance in terms of votes, but there's a lot of romanticism uh, with the ideology of the left. So they, they are generally popular. And when, 
uh, in an alliance, then you know they become a catalyst uh, for a bigger growth trajectory. But on their own, they they may not be so significant. Okay, one last word before we go. Uh, do you uh, consider this as a three-cornered contest, or is it just uh, Congress versus Shiromani Akali Dal in Punjab? I, I hope it becomes. I hope it becomes a three-cornered contest because if it does become a three-cornered contest, then the incumbency is with the Akalis. So a lot of Akali votes are being actually uh, will be actually, Akali Dal will be losing a lot of its vote, and Congress actually would stand to benefit. But in a direct head-to-head -head with the Akalis. Uh, I think the the war chest of the Akali Dal, you know, because of corruption and whatever scandals and all, is so big that and in Punjab a lot of votes are sold for liquor, money, and so on and so forth. So I would be hoping for a three three quadrant contest. Okay, thank you so much. So this was uh, Manpreet Badal, uh, who just recently merged his party PPP with the Congress, uh, and it's just a year to go for uh, assembly polls in Punjab. Uh, Definitely, there will be a lot more statements, a lot more claims and counterclaims coming before the final battle in Punjab. We'll keep you posted with all those. Stay tuned. Till next week, when we come back with a different guest.